Okay, let's get started. Lord and Father, thank you for yesterday. At the cross, I'm placing the sins that I committed that I have no knowledge of. Please forgive me for each and every one. Lord, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for yesterday. Now it's a new beginning, new day. Be with us as we go through your devotion. If something I say or something that you said through me will stay with the person that's listening to this and watching it. And especially with me. I ask this in your name. Amen. Okay. First of the day. Matthew 16, 24. And Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Why this verse? In this short verse, Jesus gives us three keys to being a disciple. First, we have to deny ourselves. When sin entered the world back in Genesis, it ruined everything. Because of it, our every natural inclination is selfish and corrupt. As we begin to follow Jesus, we become a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come, 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is the process of becoming less and less like who we used to be, and more and more like who we were created to be like, Jesus. Denying our natural selves to become our spiritual selves is the first step. Next, we have to take up our cross. In Christianity, we see Jesus act on the cross as a great sacrifice. Following him will require sacrifices in our lives as well. There are things we will have to give up. And finally, follow Jesus. We have to do our best to treat other people the way Jesus did, to live in love the way he did. These three things aren't suggestions from Jesus. They are requirements. Wednesday, March 25th, carry on in your heart. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. Having experienced trouble in his own life, the Lord Jesus knows we all have trouble. He was not rebuking a lack of faith when he said, don't let your heart be troubled. But he was offering a reason reason alternative. Jesus promises a place, a purpose, and a plan, and a plan all dependent on this person. Your troubled heart can be calmed by the assurance that he is able to do as he has promised you. Your part is to confidently act on his promises. Practice what you preach by Rebecca Jordan Hayes, Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. Scripture reading, Matthew 23, 
1 through 12. You must be careful to do everything the Pharisee, Pharisees tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. Matthew 23, 3. The Pharisees met Jesus. The Pharisees were religious leaders who wanted people to keep the law of Moses. So they built up all kinds of rules around the basic law and they burdened the people with them. In the process, many of the leaders got so distracted by the rules that they forgot the heart of the law. Love God, love your neighbor and they did not practice what they preached. In Matthew 23, 1 through 12, Jesus let the Pharisees know that he didn't, what he didn't like about them. Jesus agreed with a lot of what the Pharisees taught. Jesus was a faithful Jew, so he thought the Pharisees had good things to say what it meant to love God and to serve God. But Jesus showed the Pharisees cared more about the appearance of loving God than actually loving God. Following Jesus does not mean throwing out all religious traditions. Jesus knew that faith is meant to be practiced in community. We cannot be Christians by ourselves. We live within the guidelines of a community of other Christians. But following Jesus always does not mean following the law just for the sake of the law. Jesus always called his disciples to put people first and tradition second. Jesus challenged the Pharisees for making the rules of the law too important. He called them to show love to people. As the law was intended to help them do, Jesus calls us to love people today too, following his excellent example. God, thank you for giving us your law of love. By your spirit, help us to love you and others. Amen. March 25th. Stand up and speak up. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Matthew 5, 15. When the apostle Peter was confronted by a servant of the high priest, he lost his tongue. Rather than speaking up for Christ, he denied knowing the Savior. But after the resurrection and Pentecost, Peter couldn't keep quiet. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard, he told his critics. Acts 4.20 As the Living Bible puts it, we cannot stop telling about the wonderful things we saw Jesus do and heard him say. When we share the gospel, we must stand up and speak up for everyone to hear. Don't be deterred by criticism. And don't let timidity keep you from telling others what God has done for you. Listen to the advice of Jesus. Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. Luke 8, 39. When we think of the wonderful things we've seen Jesus do and heard him say, and when we consider the great things he has done for us, how can we be silent or hide our light under a basket? Let's look up, stand up, and speak up for him. March 25th, Faithful Messengers. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a revealing accusation 
but said, The Lord rebuke you. Jude 1 9. In northwest Russia, where the northern Divini River empties into the White Sea, sits the city of Archangel, Russian Archangelsky. The city took its name from the Michael, the Archangel Monastery that is located there. Michael is one of only two angels whose names are given to us in scripture, the other being Gabriel. And Michael is the only one of the two called Archangel. So Gabriel is referred to as such in a non-biblical book of Enoch. Arch comes from the Greek word meaning to rule. So the Archangel can be understood as a ruling or a powerful angel. Gabriel appears four times in scripture, bringing messages to Daniel twice, Zacharias, father of John the Baptist, and Mary, mother of Jesus. Michael appears to have had an overseeing rule with the Jewish people. Daniel 12, 1, Jude 1, 9. In both cases, their faithfulness stands out. Messengers, angels, are stewards of their message, and stewards must be found faithful. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. May we be faithful stewards to deliver the gospel of God to those who need his love and comfort. Psalms 38. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. Psalms 39. I said I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not even saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord my life's end, and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand's breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. 1 Samuel 7. <clears throat> so the men of Kirajerim came and took up the ark of the Lord. They took it to Abadab's house on the hill and consecrated Elisha, his son, to guard the ark of the Lord. It was a long time. 20 years in all, that the ark remained at Kareth Jerem, and all the people of Israel mourned and sought after the Lord. And Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourselves of the foreign gods and the ash force, and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away their Baals and Astros and served the Lord only. Then Samuel said, Assemble all Israel at Mishpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. When they had assembled at Mishpah, they drew water and poured it out before the Lord. 
on the day they fasted and there they confessed. We have sinned against the Lord and Samuel was leader of Israel at Mishbath. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mishbath, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. And when the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hands of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it up as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. When Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day the Lord thundered with loud thunder against the Philistines and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Misbath and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to a point below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Meshbah and Shem. He named it Eb Ebenzer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued and did not invade Israel's territory again. Throughout Samuel's lifetime, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. The towns of Ekron to Garth that the Philistines had captured from Israel were restored to her. And Israel delivered the neighboring territory from the power of the restored from the power of the Philistines, and there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Samuel continued as judge over Israel all the days of his life. From year to year, he went on a circuit from Betha to Gilgal to Meshbah, judging Israel and all those places. But he always went back to Ramah, where his home was. And there he also judged Israel. And he built an altar there to the Lord. In love and memory of Dorothy E. Taylor, Mom, July 11, 1926 to July 6, 2014. God saw you getting tired and the cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard work and hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only thinks the best. Now let's go to God. Lord, once again, thank you. Thank you for being a living God, a breathing God. Still curious whether I'm an inhale or an exhale, but I'll find that out when I die. Anyway, Lord. Please pour out your wisdom on my family, my two brothers, my sister and my dad, and my cousins, especially Karen. <laughs> I love her to death. Lord, also pour out your wisdom on my high school friends. Be with each and every one of them. Give them a beautiful day. Also, pour out your wisdom on the friends I have on Facebook that I've never met. Give them also a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. One without pain, one without suffering. 
just an enjoyable Wednesday. And Lord, dealing with me, every 15 seconds I need to be poured into your wisdom bucket. Pretty soon I'm just going to stay in that wisdom bucket. It seems about the only time that I feel safe. Anyway, Lord, thank you. And I ask all these things in your blessed name. Amen. Okay, have a beautiful day.